Welcome back to part two of this Q&A. If you haven't seen part one, we'll leave the link in the description. But we're going to get right into it. Tommy Sharp wonders if we are identical or fraternal. And I know several people ask this. The answer is the... We don't know. We, we don't need really a DNA know. test to find we out. We would have to have a DNA test. So when we were born, the way that they decided to tell uh, change, they said this is the criteria we have and the testing that we have. And then they went back and said, actually, that wasn't exactly accurate. We have new accurate ways of testing. So babies that we said were fraternal could possibly be identical, vice versa. If you really want to know, test your DNA. If it was a... Um, if it was a feeling thing and not a people a lot of times would be like well you don't look it has nothing to do with what you look like it has to, everything to do with the biology and the science of what happens but if it's a feeling then yeah i feel identical yeah. and also we're mirror image twins i'm left-handed Corey's right-handed my left tooth came in first your right tooth it's all left and right and i've heard you can't be that and not be identical so yeah i've heard that we need to get a DNA test and find out. Clara Wolf says, I would love to know more about your testimonies if you're willing to share. What's your favorite thing to grow in the garden? Hmm. One of my favorite things, I love uh, squash and zucchini. So I'm always happy, which people are like, that's the same thing. I'm, I should have clarified yellow squash and like green zucchinis. And I also love to grow, one time I grew some really mean watermelons. They were big and healthy. Love to grow fruit. So. Yeah, fruit is really fun to grow. I love to grow tomatoes. I'm always wanting to like try new tomatoes, of course flowers, any kind of food. And then as far as our testimonies go, we, we mentioned this a little bit in the first video. We both, you know, got saved when we were about nine. And I mean, as far as personal testimonies go, I mean, of course, I could probably sit here for hours and talk about all the wonderful things that, you know, God has done for my life. And I know you feel the same way. Yeah, I mean, but I also don't really feel like, sometimes you feel like people have testimonies and there are these big things that happen in their life. I don't really feel like anything big happened exactly in my life. It was more of just a coming to an age of understanding of like, yeah. what do I want my life to look like? Do I want to live my life for God or do I want to live my life for essentially nothing? Because there's really not, and for right. me, there's nothing else to live it for. So that's kind of, that's kind of pretty much it. I mean, there's not a whole lot to it. Yeah. Except I saw how bad Corey was and decided I wanted to be good. <laughs> hey! No, I'm joking. <laughs> I know. That's funny. Okay, Sandy Scott says she wants to know how our granny makes her mineral makeup. What kind of job does daddy have? And, Corey, do you work on your and Katie's channel on the days you don't work for your mom? And do you do any sewing? We talked about it in the last video, part one, that we wish we could sew. And I have sewed some stuff, but not very much. And our grandma, she always made our mineral makeup from a company called Monave. I'll put the link in the description. You buy the minerals from there. Uh, and lately we actually, all me, mom, and Katie started trying out uh, a makeup by Jane Airedale. It's I've a, not even bought any. Oh, you haven't? I don't even, yeah, I never bought any because I won't hardly wear it. So I'm well, still going through makeup I had years ago. Okay, well, we, uh, we've we been using the Jane Airedale company just because it's got mineral makeup and we like that. What kind of job does daddy have? So our dad works for, he's actually the director of maintenance for Cherokee County. So he works in maintenance. Maintenance man. And then, yes, on Monday and Tuesday, I help mom with her videos. And then on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, while I do have other things to do, that's my main days for filming our videos. Videos. For us to film our videos. Right. Okay, so Pete Black says, obviously y'all aren't parents yet yourselves, but from your points of view, what did your parents do to raise you both to be so appreciative of your heritage and culture? Thank you, that's very sweet. He says, I have two little ones and worry that they'll latch on to the worldly culture and leave behind the music and food things of our Appalachian people. I can't say enough about what an incredible job your parents have done. Oh, thank you so much. That is very kind of you. We, we owe it all to our parents. We've had absolutely wonderful parents and... I think this goes back a little bit to what we talked about in the first video about kind of appreciation that mom and dad as well always taught us to be grateful. And mom has always been crazy about Appalachian culture. I mean, she was when we were little little kids, so she would kind of find a way to just naturally work that in. And we were just kind of like raised in that, so it was always normal to us. And she would kind of highlight, highlight the way that we spoke. Well, and, and always having us involved in the community. So, like, yeah. always going to the community center, always going to sing-ins, always going to church. And these people that I grew to just absolutely love and respect in my community, they were all Appalachian folks doing Appalachian things, whether they noticed it or not. So, 
kind of fostering a love for your family and your community, I'm like, well, I really love Frankie Chastain. She was one of the best people in the world, and she did all these things, and she was an Appalachian mamaw if I ever saw one. So it's kind of that love and respect and adoration for other people, the people yeah. of my community. You yeah, know? for sure. For sure. Uh, another question. Have you and your folks been planning the big family camping trip you talked about on your mom's channel? Oh, I really want to. I would absolutely love to take a big camping trip. We haven't been planning it, but we need to because I really want to do that. Yeah, we just, we're the kind of people we'll talk about it, but if it come, if we know if we find a time where we can all go, we'll go, and if we don't, then we just don't, but yeah. We'll get back to you if we actually go camping, yes, and there, and would, there, there would, would be, be a video. video. Yeah, exactly. And then if each of you were to write a book yourself, like Mother Like Daughters, what kind of book would you write? Mm, that's an interesting question. I... I, like, for a long time have thought that I would like to write a book. Like, I would love to write a fiction book or something because I like to read fiction. I don't really know if that will ever happen. I did like to write in school. I would also like to write a book, some kind of devotional type book. And I have, I have kind of something in the works for that. But no one get really excited because it's, it's nothing that's going to be even, even, uh, even anything anytime soon so i always thought it'd be fun to write short stories or kind of like you said little fiction mystery stories and i've got a whole jump drive full of stuff i wrote years ago i used to write poetry i've got all that stuff tucked away i probably really could do something with it nick also loves to write so i have somebody to encourage me yeah. so you never know maybe me and nick will write a book of short stories yeah you never know we have got two questions people asking about moonshining in our family uh Definitely not us. We're teetotalers. We don't drink. None of us drink. Uh, Are they asking if our family members, like old family members, yeah. used to run moonshine? Yeah, I think that's the question. Um, not that I know of. Actually, I mean, I will say, back on my dad's side of the family, one time I was reading some census records, and his grandpa, I don't know if he really meant this. I actually think he probably did run moonshine, or if he was joking. Back then, they would come up into these hollers and do census work and ask these Appalachian folks all these questions, and it was kind of a thing people understood. Like, they didn't like being asked those questions, and they didn't like being messed with, so they would give false answers. When they would be like, what do you do for a living? They would lie and tell them a job that, that, that they weren't, they didn't have. So I did see one time on a census record where one of my, like, my great-grandpa was like, moonshiner. And I'm like, <laughs> did he really do that, or... You know, I'm thinking he probably just said that because he was like, none of your business, so. Yeah. But, uh, no, not that I know of. That was not, that's not something my, my close family ever did, so. <laughs> Never know. That's funny, though. It is funny, yeah. Blair Warren says, love your family. Who lives on the mountain of Granny's children? One brother and your mom. Does Corey make any rings out of gold? One last question. Do y'all wear polyester in the summer? So, Granny lives, like, basically just off camera down that way. Mom and Daddy here. She has a brother, Steve, that lives right there, and then her brother, Paul, lives there. Yep, so all so of all three, siblings, all, all of them are here. Yeah, all three children are here. Um, Katie actually makes jewelry, but she doesn't really... I never worked gold in Smith. gold. I don't... Gold's a whole other animal than silver. One of these days, I might tackle it if gold ever comes down. <laughs> so expensive. It's very expensive. As far as polyester in the summer, yes. I have wore polyester in the summer, but I'm careful about where I wear it. Like, if I was going to go to a picnic and be outside all day, I'm not wearing, po wearing polyester. But if I'm just going to be, like, going to the grocery store where I know it's air conditioning, I, I have done wear. it. Anything to look cool. Even if your skin can't breathe. No, <laughs> Ms. Mary is asking us if Mom dressed us the same when we were kids because she says that she has a twin and they're fraternal but she said that she was a tomboy and her sister was a girly girl mom never really dressed us the same uh she definitely did dress us and she was really good about letting us uh pick out what we wanted to wear but at the beginning of the week she would set out pre-made outfits and then we got to pick from those that's smart it was I smart. think that was pretty smart we never dressed exactly the same we had one outfit, only, do you remember it, one gray Scooby-Doo outfit that was exactly alike, and we would both put it on, and it was the same outfit, and that's the only thing we had that was exactly alike. Now, we might match or something like that, but for the most part, we did our own thing. Yeah. Very expressive. Both wanted yeah. to wear different stuff. I would say that's true. Angela says, I would love to know about the little paintings of the lady in the red dress on your mom's walls. I look at them while she's reading to us. I could be wrong, but I'm wondering if you're talking about the uh, angel painting. 
Yeah, probably that's all I can think of. And about. Mama went through a spell where she painted a lot of angels. I actually used to have that painting in my bedroom, and I think I had it at my house. And I seen it recently in the living or in the kitchen, and I was like, I should have kept that. I could have <laughs> in my house. But she painted a lot of angels, and I think she would still paint now if she had more time. Mhm. Mm I think but. so. All right, Becky Wilson says, Katie, how did you get into rocks and jewelry making? Corey, marriage agrees with you. How are you setting up your own house styles? Thank you. Um. I don't know how it started, but ever since I was a kid, I mean, it's like the, my first memories are saying, ooh, rocks. So I always loved rocks. I just, from the very beginning, picked them up and took, kept them and took them home. And then when I got to be like 12 or 13, I was like, maybe I, you know, I kind of got curious, more interested in what could I do with this. So I started doing a little bit of crafting. Granny got some mail order kits in the mail, little bracelets and earrings you could make. And that's just kind of where it started and as I learned to do that then I learned there was classes you could take and you could learn how to cut and polish rocks so then I started that and the rest is history so kind of I don't know I think I was just born with this like extreme interest in rocks yeah I guess and then how am I setting up my house styles badly no I'm badly according to Katie um, <laughs> that is an interesting question I love to like thrift items antique store items you know if they're not like too expensive eBay lots of different stuff like that uh, I like old stuff I like birds I like lots of uh, like brown orange red kind of colors like that but I, I kind of think that you, um, each room has a theme. That's kind of how... You think so? Yeah, and that's how I like to do it. Each room kind of has its own feel so that you feel like... Because sometimes you might say, well, I really like th these four colors and I can't do them all. Right. So you kind of feel like you can exhaust all your options if you do a different... Yeah, a, I do know what you're theme, saying. So. And I always feel like the bathroom is the place where you can just pull out all the stops and do something crazy. Because it's Wallpaper a small room. or like, yeah. yeah. You know, they do that peel and stick wallpaper nowadays. And they even do printed like uh textured like stamp on a roller so you could like oh, big wide yeah. roller so you could do all kinds that of fun cool. stuff there yeah ben moffat says what are some of your favorite family heirlooms that's a good question Something i think for me a lot of it is stormy it, out here it is. we better wrap this up i think for me it's kitchen stuff if you've been on the channel you know i love vintage kitchen stuff so stuff that like my great grandma used that i've been fortunate enough to have or stuff that my mom used or grand granny used Something like that that's like very practical that I can use on a daily basis I like. Um, I currently in my possession, which I will give these back, <laughs> I have my grandma's wedding rings that I'm going to fix for. I have my other grandma's wedding band who um, she just gave to me. She just gifted. So things like that are very precious. I have a necklace that was my great grandma's. Um, I have like just little knickknacks, just different little things that were handed down that I think are really special that they kept because they liked them, so that's special to me too. Especially anything on paper, anything yeah. that like I have my grandpa's Bible, so just stuff that he put in that Bible to save, I just love it. I mean, even if it's just like a clip out from a newspaper and I don't even really know what it is, it's special to me because it was in his he Bible. kept it. Yeah. So and stuff like that. I'm with you too. Anything that's practical, I still have things that I use or clothes that were Granny's that were polyester that she wore or made. We so like that. yeah. All right, John has a few questions. Do you live near the Appalachian Trail? Yeah, we're actually maybe. Me and Austin are actually closer than y'all. Kind of Probably leaving like Blairsville. 30, 35 yeah. minutes from it. Uh, there's a there's a place there where you can kind of get on the trail. And then he says, I live in New Jersey. I'm working in New York City. Have you been to either location? No, we have not. No, I've been. We've been to Connecticut, Massachusetts, Michigan, Vermont. And he also asked, have you been to Dollywood or Disney? Not Disney, but we have been to Dollywood. And to Ghost Town. <laughs> and to Ghost Town. <laughs> Comment below if you know where that's at. I never did. We never were crazy about Disney. When we were kids, we did. We watched all the off-brand cheap VHS movies. We didn't really do. Yeah, and I Disney. never liked rides because I get motion sick so easy, and car sick so easy, and plane sick, and so I just I like to just stay seated at all times yep, or same. on the ground. Never was our thing. So but. I don't really like rides because I get too sick. All right, Diane, this is a good question. When it comes to reading the Bible or praying, do you find it hard to get into? Do you feel like it's a battle every time, and how do you handle it? That's a good question. I used to feel like it was really hard for me to sit down and make the time and just really hard for me to understand the Bible. But that's when I was like thinking, well, I have to read like three chapters a day or I'm not really reading the Bible. That is not true. Now, if you can do that, that's great. 
but I've learned that even if all I can do is take a couple verses and really make sure I understand that and turn that over and over in my mind, that's better than three chapters. Because the yeah. point is to understand it and then apply it to your life. Right. I don't force it. I just, I'm the kind of person, I don't really have a set prayer time. I just pray all day during the day. I'm like, if I see something and I'm thinking, Lord, then people need help, then I pray for them or I pray for my family or I just, I just never... I'm never not saying something like, help me out here, or I'm stupid, help me not be stupid, or, you know? So, yeah, don't force it. I mean, I, I open that Bible when I feel like, hey, I need help. Hey, I need to think about something. Hey, I, I'm looking for something, you and know? And that's what I was going to say. One tip that I would have, which is a big tip, is if you're just, like, wanting to, you know you should read the Bible or feel like you should and you don't really know where to start, if you have an issue going on in your life, look up scriptures about that. So there's a it's Bible right there. concordance in the back of every Bible, but you can also get online or even buy a separate concordance. Look up some kind of word that's related to a situation you're going through and then read about that, and that can kind of get you into reading. That's right. And trying to come up with a consistent time of, okay, I'm going to try to make this time during the day, whether it's morning, afternoon, on your lunch break, something like that. Yes. Tom says, do you ever do any of the touristy things like Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg, or Maggie Valley? We've been to Maggie Valley, but I have never been actually to Gatlinburg or Pigeon Forge. Yeah, I don't, I'm not, I'm not we in. We don't really no. know. <laughs> I just don't like the touristy things. I'm a workaholic, so if I have time, I would be here and I would be working. Doug wants to know what's our favorite dessert that our mom makes. I love, she makes like uh, any kind of cobbler, like peach cobbler, blackberry cobbler, uh, that kind of stuff. I'm a huge fruit person, like fruit pie person, but I also really like pumpkin roll that she makes. And oh, Corey gosh. can make it too, so. I don't know. Mom makes so many good desserts. She makes a chess cake that's really good. Oh, I forgot made, about that. She made a postum cake one time. Oh my gosh. That was one of the best cakes I ever have. I think she made a video. If she did, I'll put the link in the description because that was so good. Kind of mm. tasted like caramel. Ooh. Home Life with Linda says, wasn't there going to be another video from Katie's Vacation Out West or did we see them all? No, you didn't see them all there eventually will be something. It's just, I'm not lying, I probably took like 16 hours worth of footage and it's not easy to comb through. So there'll be something else. Even if I just slap it all together, there'll be something. <laughs> <laughs> Duane wants to know, do we like chicken gizzards? No, I've tried them and I don't like that. It's a texture thing for me, no. All right, I'll let you answer this, Katie. Don Felder or Joe Walsh? Oh, that's hard. That's a hard question. You know, I'm tempted to say Don Felder because I like he had a unique style of playing, but come on, Joe Walsh was just like so explosive. So I don't know if I could pick one or the other. I will say I liked them both together very well when they played together. They oh, could yeah. have just got along. <laughs> that is true. Betty says, I wonder which parent, grandparent, aunt, or uncle you feel most like. My Aunt Betty always said I reminded her of my grandma, and I think so too. Um, Daddy always told me that I was a whole lot like his grandma, Lura, but I, she died a few months before we were born and I never got to meet her, so I don't know. Um, sometimes I kind of feel like my Uncle Paul. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely see those similarities between you and Paul, and I don't know, I think I'm a lot like Dad's mom, Miss Cindy. I think you are, and I think I'm a lot like Dad's dad, yeah. Pat Paul. <laughs> I think that's accurate. All right, Claire says... Favorites, favorite musicians, favorite movies, favorite Bibles and books, and at least and favorite least. and least favorite chores. Favorite musicians. We talked a little bit about that in the last video. We like a lot of country stuff, some classic rock stuff. I adore the Eagles. I just yeah. really like them. Always have. And I like a lot of country stuff. We like Travis Tritt, Clint Black, Alan Jackson. Lots of people. Favorite movies. Oh gosh, that's, that's a, a really a hard one. one. Friendship Field. <laughs> that's a really old kid movie that we yeah. loved when we were kids. But I wouldn't say that that's my favorite movie. Um, Man, that's a hard one. I'm really struggling. Yeah. It, I don't know. Is, I'm not a huge movie bad. person. I don't like watching movies, so I'm not... Yeah, I don't... Growing up, we didn't watch a lot of movies, and I'll be completely honest with you, and Mama would tell you our attention span wasn't allowing. We couldn't sit still for mm. any more than that. Kind of the same thing now. I really like westerns, so I'd yeah. have to say my favorite movie would probably be a western. Something like that. Like I mean, Young Guns? Can yeah. I say Young Guns is that my works. favorite movie? I'm saying Young Guns or Tombstone. Yeah, that will work. Me and Austin have made it, not all the way through, but part way through the Jesse Stone like movie series. 
We like that. Favorite Bibles and books. We did talk a little bit about that in the last video. Well, as far as favorite Bibles go, we do King James Version. That's just what we grew up KJV. with. KJV. <laughs> KJV. <laughs> favorite and least favorite chores. Um, boy, hold on. As far as books go, Writers of the Purple Sage. That's probably, that's probably one of my favorite books. It's good, and if you've not read it, you should. And I'll leave a link in the description. We can to some books. I like lots of different fiction books. Uh, we recently did an update video where I mentioned some good Christian fiction books. I'll leave some links down below to that. I like Ruth Ware. She's wrote a lot of really good thriller books. Oh, yeah. I like fiction. Favorite and least favorite chores. Oh. I like to clean, and I think we both do. It can be, like, very therapeutic for me. But there's definitely, like, dishes. I hate doing dishes. No, I don't. I'd rather... Look, I'd rather do the dishes. There's only one chore that I cannot, I don't like doing. Which is? And I do not like mucking the chicken lot oh, at all. I just hate that's doing a bad that. Chore. And I don't like weed eating. I would rather weed eat and sweep the floors than do the dishes. No! I'd yeah. way rather do the dishes than sweep and weed eat. Heck no. Yeah, I don't it's know. crazy. The dishes are just so tedious and it just annoys me. I don't like it. I'd rather do the dishes than I had dry them. That's probably backwards, but you know. Pat says, Corey, are you feeling led to go into full-time ministry? You know, it's interesting. I've got a lot of comments on devotional stuff saying, you know, you need to do some things in ministry. I can't say that at this point in time I, I feel that, that I'm being led to go into ministry full-time, but I really enjoy making the devotional videos. And like I had mentioned in the first part uh, of, of this video, part one, I would love to write kind of like a devotional style book. I have something just just barely, just a little bit in the works, so no one get excited about that. Uh, but I would love to do something like that for sure. Audrey Powell says, what are your college degrees in? What jobs did you have before YouTube and Etsy? We actually have bachelors of art and we did several things and we got some more questions on this. So before we did YouTube and kind of Etsy full time, I, I had like several office jobs. Katie worked in the school system. Um, we even had landscape, and that was like our very first job. Yeah, I worked at some craft schools. I did some production work for a jeweler for a little while. Um, I learned quite a bit when I was doing that. We done definitely a mix of things. But I hated working for the man. I didn't like it. We are very blessed to get to work for ourselves. So we're very grateful. Yes, for that for sure. Mama says, Corey. Do you have good circulation in your hands? I noticed in some of your videos your fingers look a bit sh uh, shade of red. No, I do not have good circulation, and I have never had good <laughs> circulation. Uh, I'm not really sure why, but I, yeah, I, I really don't have good circulation. My hands, even if it's in the summer and it's 80 degrees, they're always cold, and if I go to shake someone's hand, they will be like, why are your hands so cold? And you got dead people hands, that's what it, Dad says. Yeah, and if you've been on the channel before, you've probably heard me mention that Really, all of us here in this household have noise just a little bit, which is basically where your fingers turn literally ghostly or deathly white, and they go numb, and it can be somewhat painful. My toes do that, too. I have had that looked into. I know noids can often be accompanied with an autoimmune. I was tested for that. They said I didn't have that. It's Mine not too comes bad. and goes. It's not as bad as it used to be. No. Do either of you girls play mandolin or banjo? Do you play other instruments besides guitar and violin? I can play the mandolin, and I've played it on and off for years. I have a really nice mandolin that Austin bought me before we got married, and shame on me, I don't play it. I can play the mandolin, but I cannot play it well. I do not know how to play the banjo. I can play piano, guitar, fiddle. I can play a really mean joke, too. <laughs> yeah. This question by James. This is so funny. I love this. Who taught you how to make all this cool stuff? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not really sure exactly what cool stuff you mean, but... Well, uh, I mean, we've had everybody in our family's always been creative. My dad also always did his own gunsmithing. My granny's always crocheted. Mama's was, always cooked. Yep, they're just always creative. Our parents really encouraged us to be creative and, and find a hobby um, that we like, like making stuff or being creative, so... It just kind of came along the way, I guess. Yeah, we're blessed to live in a creative family. I'm maybe most excited to answer this question. I actually meant to even start the very first video with this question, and I forgot. So here we are. This is from S. Scott, and he says, What does your dad really like? I've been a subscriber to both your channels. I found you through your mom. Sometimes your dad gives off such an unfriendly vibe, like hostile vibe. <laughs> then I see him smile sometimes, and he looks like the most kind man. I'm curious what kind of daddy he is. 
man, I just wish that you could spend even just like an hour with him. He is the most goofy, cut up person that you're ever going to meet. And if I had to say which parent was more stern, mom. Oh, That's who yeah. we would have always said, but here's what happens to dad. You turn the camera on and he gets nervous. And then he gets nervous and he's like, well, I don't know. What do you want me to say? You he didn't tell me like, what, what do you say? want? And then he comes across as that, but he is the most like goofy, silly, cut up person. Oh gosh, yeah. He has a really, really huge range of emotion. And so do I. That's where I get it from. He'll kill me if he sees that. But, uh, he is very, very funny and never, ever serious. Um, I think I, more of my personality is him. He just, I just have no filter with it. I would laugh and cut up and tell jokes all day long. Even when I need to be serious, I really can't be. <laughs> but he just can't do that. The camera comes on and he's no, like... No, he gets very nervous. He's not, uh, like for us, I mean... I, I feel like I can turn the camera on and yeah, we'll go into a video with a game plan, but if it was just like, boom, you got to get up and entertain, we could do it. And maybe oh, yeah. that's just from like playing music for years and doing gigs, but we don't feel nervous about that at all. But you turn the camera on him and he just absolutely freezes in. <laughs> and that really comes across because mom will get comments in her videos saying, you know, you know, gosh, Matt don't really seem very nice. And he, <laughs> oh my gosh, he is an incredibly kind, giving, wonderful person. He's yes, been the best he would dad help anybody ever. He just kind of comes across as really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't see this, Daddy. Okay. Hmm. Katie did not actually break her back. Now, when I was a very young kiddo, I fell on the playground. And I, and I got hurt, and I had to go home because I couldn't sit down. My butt hurt. That's when I say my back, I'm really talking about my tailbone. And I have actually had, from that time on varying levels some sometimes severe sometimes not severe back pain but I don't think I broke it now I did have a physical therapist one time tell me it's possible you probably cracked your tailbone or fractured it and maybe a little bit of arthritis set up in it but I never went to the hospital with a broke back I just say that because sometimes I feel like my back don't work <laughs> but it is not broke I'm okay no okay hope says what would you buy your pants if you had the money what would you like buy to make them happy land, land. yeah Really, just one word. If we had the money, we would buy them a big old farm. That's and exactly. then we would move right in on the middle of it. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what we would do. Which one was born first? Me. Katie was two born minutes. first by two minutes. I love this. What creeps you out? Snakes, spiders, livers, and onions? Um, Spiders. Snakes don't creep me out at all. I've never been afraid of no. snakes. And the older I get, the better I'm getting about not being creeped out by spiders. It, it really... Spiders is the only thing that gives me... Kind of that, just feels creepy. Yeah. That reaction. Well, I should say spiders and insects with legs that ain't right. And I just... <laughs> no! I, too I, many legs! I can't. And it's not even... It just depends on how they are. Centipedes don't bother me. But we were talking about this last night, me and Austin and Dad. And I don't even want to talk about it because when I do, it makes my skin crawl. The bugs that have too many legs but they have the height. I don't know what they Oh, are. no! And I've only seen them like twice. And They're the, tall. Oh, that's freak town. No. No, 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 no. I just can't. No. It really, I get that physical oh. reaction, but that's the only thing. Yeah. Not even all spiders, just certain ones. Well, let me tell you something. insects. The wolfies don't do it for me. They're not scary because they're not after you. I don't know. I don't like this. They're not dangerous. I had a wolfie that was hanging around. I named him Larry Jack. I'm not scared of him. I think he actually died, but them shiny spiders, uh-uh. I don't do them. No. No, 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 no. Make him disappear. No. Uh, Sandy says, what do you like best about country living? Just the pace. Everything is so slow. And like I said in the last video, it's like, at least where we live, it's like a road through a cow pasture. And there's really, well, it's getting bigger all the time, but there's not such a hustle and bustle and you don't have to sit through the red light for four times before you can go through. Yeah, I do like the country living. I like the values. I like physically what it looks like. And I like what it sounds like because there's really not a whole lot of sound going on. It's just birds. It's peaceful. Yep. Who is your favorite golden girl? Dorothy. Blanche. <laughs> because I love the way she talks. That's why. I like her clothes and I like the way she talks. Okay, this is a great question by Gracie. She's asking how our aunt's family is and how McKenna is. We have been meaning to do an update about McKenna. I'm really sorry that we I haven't. Know. But she is at a rehab, like an intensive rehab facility doing physical therapy. And I think it's, it's kind of slow progress, but she's improving. 
she's improving and they expect her to make a 100 percent full recovery they think she's going to be pretty much back to the same that she was which is such i mean i get chills like talking about it right now because she went from the first night you need to just get ready she's not going to make it to now yep. she's been able to stand up a little bit on her own so she's doing she's doing better my aunt's family i think they're still you know pretty sad pretty down and out but i think that as time passes they're all just kind of getting used to what life looks like without without those two family members so they can still use your prayers of course yeah. mckenna's family McKenna could too as well um but i think they're hanging in there i mean the best that they can all right, we got a few more questions here, and then we're gonna wrap Olivia. this up. Olivia, hey Olivia, when is my birthday? September twenty fifth. I will be a hundred. <laughs> we'll be a hundred years old. Be twenty seven. We'll twenty seven on the twenty fifth of September. We will be. Okay. Golden Eagle. If you had to switch places and bodies with someone, who would it be? I think I'd switch bodies with you. Now listen, I know that that may sound really weird because it's I was like, gonna don't say you that. already like. But I, that would be so cool because I know that we're so similar, but if I switch bodies with you, then I would really get to see how similar you are to me. I would switch with you, too. I think that would be cool. What are two things that you cannot have for breakfast? We were literally just talking about this. I will not, under any circumstance, eat oatmeal for breakfast. In fact, I won't eat it any time. I called it horse food. I can't eat oatmeal. I don't like it, and it doesn't sit well with me. Um, and I also won't eat... What else will I not eat for breakfast? I won't eat cereal for breakfast. I haven't ate a bowl of cereal in literally, I don't, 15 years. I just don't eat cereal. I love cereal, but I don't eat it. Oatmeal, I like it. It hurts me, but I still eat it anyways. But I wonder if that was a joke, because then it says, what always sleeps with its shoes on? And I know I've heard that before, but I don't remember the answer. Last question, what are the two <laughs> strongest days? I don't know. you got to reply back to us, Golden Eagle. Let us what does know. that mean? You're trying to tell us something. It's a message. Maybe. And then Trevor, Trevor Welch, thank you for your question, Trevor. Have you and your family ever considered opening up a roadside diner? Man, if we had more time, that would be fun. That would literally be awesome. All our fun we people could go meet all our us. Yeah, all our YouTube people could come and meet And I could us. have mom's biscuits every day. I'd probably be making them back there in the kitchen. Yeah, you'd be back in the kitchen. All right, we're going to wrap this video up here. Thank you again for watching this. Part two to our Q&A, like we said, if you didn't see part one, we'll leave a link in the description. And again, if we didn't answer your question, you know, we apologize. We tried to answer as many as we can without making these videos three hours long. And uh, if we didn't answer your questions in this video or the last one, we will answer them in the comments. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you for your questions. Bye. Bye. Let's okay, roll. that's it.